Hi, welcome to this presentation on deploying IBM Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.6 on AWS Marketplace. This presentation will cover the all-in-cloud or the hybrid deployment solutions, and it'll also talk about the new EC2 snapshot protection provided in Spectrum Protect Plus 10.1.6. So AWS Marketplace is going to offer the automatic deployment of the Spectrum Protect Plus server and vSnap into the AWS VPC. And this virtual private cloud can either be an existing VPC or a new VPC. And once you have Spectrum Protect Plus running either in this hybrid or all-in-cloud environment, it's going to be able to protect and reuse the application workloads that are running on AWS. So this includes things like DB2, Microsoft SQL, Oracle, MongoDB, Microsoft Exchange Server. And once it's protected these workloads, it can send copies of these snapshots out to even cheaper S3 container storage for long-term retention. And it can also replicate this information with other Spectrum Protect Plus vSnaps. So the vSnap inside of AWS can act as a replication target for an on-premise vSnap. You could basically use Spectrum Protect Plus to replicate out to AWS all of your on-premise workloads. And this would be a great solution in case you had a disaster recovery where you wanted to recover everything back into the cloud, including your Spectrum Protect Plus server. So when we look at the deployment here, we have two pictures. On the left-hand side, you can see the hybrid where the Spectrum Protect Plus server and its own vSnap sits on premise, and it connects out with the vSnap that's protecting the workloads inside of AWS. The second picture shows an all-in-cloud deployment where both the Spectrum Protect Plus server and vSnap are located in the cloud, protecting the database workloads inside of AWS. Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.6 introduces the option to protect EC2 using a snapshot, which will be stored locally inside of AWS, but managed by Spectrum Protect Plus. So both the backups and the restores and the amount of time those snapshots are kept is managed by Spectrum Protect Plus. And this is a new option you can select when you're installing Spectrum Protect Plus inside of AWS Marketplace. So this solution gives you enterprise proven data protection and reuse for these workloads like SQL, Oracle, DB2, MongoDB, and Exchange. It gives you that replication between on-premise and in-cloud vSnaps, and it gives you the ability to easily offload those vSnaps into a S3 object storage out on AWS. This Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.6 also gives you the ability to protect EC2 environments. When this is installed, it's installed as infrastructure as a service. So we work with AWS to automatically deploy and configure the Entity. So if you're doing it all in cloud, we would deploy and configure the Spectrum Protect Plus server and the vSnap. There's robust reporting where we can see what's going on both in the installation as well as in the product itself. And once Spectrum Protect Plus server and vSnap are up and running, the customer then is going to manage the installation of updates as, as well as the everyday ins and outs of the Spectrum Protect Plus server. Back in June of 2019, we came out with our first offering in this space, and that was for your Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.3. The major difference in that was that that was a hybrid only approach, so your Spectrum Protect Plus server would have been on premise. There is a deployment guide which will walk you through step by step what I'm talking about and what I show in these additional videos here, where I actually go through an installation both in an existing VPC and a new VPC. There's also a video that covers how to enable the EC2 snapshots. So what this is, this offering, is that Spectrum Protect Plus, the vSnap storage, and optionally the Spectrum Protect Plus server resources can now be purchased on AWS and 
deployed into the AWS cloud. What this is not is this is not a backup as a service. It is a push button automated deployment, but after that we turn over the day-to-day -day management to the end user themselves. Now, since we did our original offering last year, we have had updates to the Spectrum Protect Plus server. And so I've listed here the different features that were upgraded in those specific releases. There's also YouTubes that talk about details of these specific releases. When it comes to purchasing and pricing of the Spectrum Protect Plus solution in AWS, the customer is going to bring their own license for Spectrum Protect Plus server. And this license can be purchased through the Passport Advantage. The options for Passport Advantage include either being part of a storage suite or they could purchase it standalone. Now, one thing to note is that when the Spectrum Protect Plus server is installed for an all-in-cloud AWS solution. It will have a temporary 30-day license associated with it. So the user will have to go into the Spectrum Protect Plus console and register a Spectrum Protect Plus license before the 30 days is up. The customer also has to pay for the Amazon resources. And so this includes the servers that the vSnap and Spectrum Protect Plus server might run on, the storage, the optional S3 bucket, the Elastic IPs, the Bastion host, and anything else that's required to run this environment. Spectrum Protect Plus, the approximate pricing is about $2,000 perpetually or $60 per month for 10 VMs. And then depending upon other options you have out there, whether it's front-end or back-end licensing inside of the suite, those will have different options available. And if you are a Spectrum Protect Plus seller, the compensation for this is the same as if you were selling it standalone in, in a customer's on-premise location. So when you go to plan this installation, you do want to look at our Spectrum Protect Plus blueprints and sizers. This is gonna help you with recommendations about the architecture, as well as the size of the vSnap um, that you'll need out there. And it'll also help you determine, for instance, if you want to do deduplication and, and so forth. So once you run that sizing tool, you will simply take the outputs from that and enter it directly into the Amazon Web Services while you're going through the deployment. There's a place that'll actually ask you for the server repository size. And so you'll take your sizing information and enter it directly there. Now, one nice thing about the AWS deployment is that when it comes to an instant type, We've figured out for you the best instant types out there so you can kind of select from that list the appropriate instant type. And so that takes a lot of the guesswork out of the type of hardware and performance that you'll need out there. Okay, let's take a more technical look at this solution. So when we talk about the all-in-cloud, we're talking about having both our Spectrum Protect Plus server as well as our vSnap, which is basically our repository, our storage pool, sit inside of the AWS cloud. And this is going to be the same location as the applications that we're protecting. And so you can see this gives us a couple of great use cases. The first use case is that you can, you can do your normal data protection from the Spectrum Protect Plus server and the vSnap, backing up these different SQL and, and DB2 and MongoDB and Oracle databases. You can do reuse. So if for some reason you need to spin up a second instance of an Oracle database for testing, then you could simply take a copy out of the vSnap server and spin it up directly into AWS. So that's an easy reuse case, as well as of course restore. If something happened to your Oracle DB, you can restore it directly from that vSnap, which is also sitting on AWS. And then a third case is you can set up a service level agreement inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. In fact, we'll set one up automatically for you if you request an S3 bucket. And this will send copies of the data out to the S3 bucket for longer term retention. And since the S3 buckets are usually based on 
less expensive storage than your vSnap repositories, that's a good way to save money there. If you enable EC2 snapshot protection, you'll see here that the Spectrum Protect server is controlling the SLA that dictates how often the snapshots are created and how long they're retained. The Spectrum Protect Plus server will also enable the restore, but do notice that the snapshots themselves are being stored inside of AWS on S3 storage. Okay, so this was the all-in cloud solution. One thing I didn't mention as a use case is this disaster recovery. If you did have a disaster and wanted to restore everything into the cloud, including your Spectrum Protect Plus server, you could go ahead and do an all-in cloud deployment and have a DR environment ready to go and start recovering the data that was needed to keep your operation up and running. Okay, the second scenario is hybrid. In this case, on premise here, we have the Spectrum Protect Plus server and a vSnap that goes with that. And so this would be protecting the customer's on-site applications or virtual machines. In addition, we have another vSnap server sitting out on AWS. And for this vSnap server, we'd be backing up the databases that are residing in AWS. Obviously, this is gonna be a more rapid backup than trying to send these database backups across the network back to the on-premise site. So with this case, we can do a couple things. One, we can replicate the two vSnaps between each other so that you could have a copy of your on-premise data also being stored in the cloud and vice versa. You can reuse the data that you're backing up here to create test cases or restore damaged databases or other applications into the cloud. And then of course you can also send copies of the data out to an S3 bucket for long-term retention. If you enabled the EC2 snapshot protection, the on-premise Spectrum Protect Plus server will have an SLA that controls how often those snapshots are created and how long they're retained. It will be also where you do the restores from but the snapshots themselves will be stored out on Amazon S3 storage inside of the AWS cloud. So when we look at these use cases, we've covered these here in the previous screen. So when you go to actually deploy Spectrum Protect Plus inside of AWS, once you've decided where your Spectrum Protect Plus server is gonna be, is it gonna be in the cloud or is it gonna be on premise? The next thing you need to decide is, are you going to deploy this into an existing VPC, virtual private cloud, or are you going to have the deployment create a new VPC to deploy it into? So if you check out the two demos I did, you'll see the slight differences between these two deployments. The biggest difference here, if you deploy into an existing VPC, you have to have an existing Bastion server out on your AWS available and the newly deployed vSnap will be registered into the Spectrum Protect Plus server automatically. So if you are going into a new VPC and you're having AWS create this VPC as part of the deployment, if you're going all in cloud, then the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap will be registered to the SPP server automatically. However, if you're doing a hybrid and you want to hook that vSnap that's in the cloud up to an on-premise SPP server, you'll have to do that manually after the VPC has been created. You would also have to manually set up the EC2 snapshot protection inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus server after the Spectrum Protect Plus server was connected via the VPC and VPN. So when we have AWS deploy into a new VPC, AWS will build a new environment that includes VPCs, subnets, NAT gateways, security groups, bastion servers, and all the other infrastructure that's required. When we deploy Spectrum Protect Plus in AWS, we use cloud formations to make that job easier. And an AWS cloud formation is basically an easy way to create and manage a collection of related AWS resources. And so when you go to provision them and update them, they're done in a predictable orderly way. For Spectrum Protect Plus, we have two main 
cloud formation templates. The first one is going to be your existing VPC. The second one is a new VPC. And then we have four nested cloud formation templates. Create new VPC, create new bastion, create Spectrum Protect Plus server, and deploy vSnap. So on the right hand side here, if you do a new VPC, you'll see that we actually create one main cloud formation template and then four nested underneath that because for a new VPC, we will create a Bastion server, a VPC, a Spectrum Protect Plus server, and a vSnap. If you are going into an existing VPC, we'll have one main cloud formation template and then we'll just deploy the nested Create Spectrum Protect Plus stack and the vSnap stack. As AWS goes through the deployment, it will prompt you for different things and it will have different inputs into the template. And so some of the things that it'll prompt you for are, for instance, the username and password you want to use for the vSnap server and the username and password either for an existing Spectrum Protect Plus server or that you want to use for your new Spectrum Protect Plus server. Some of these other pieces will be created automatically um, with the exception of a bastion server if you're deploying into an existing environment. Then you'll have to have already have that bastion server set up. This new offering is slightly different than our offering from last year in deployment methods. A couple new items you can select is you can choose a vSnap pool type. This will help with performance. And so this EBS type will give you the selection of SC1, GB2, or ST1. Spectrum Protect Plus 10.1.6 offers the ability to protect EC2 with snapshots. By default, this is enabled. If you disable it, or if you do a upgrade from Spectrum Protect Plus 10.1.5 to 10.1.6, you can manually enable the EC2 snapshots in Spectrum Protect Plus after the fact. Likewise, you'll have an option to dedupe or not dedupe the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap, and you'll have the option to automatically create or utilize an S3 bucket to copy the data out of the vSnap to. Also, when you select this option, we will update the service level agreement that we create to reflect the scheduled copy to S3 bucket. On the left-hand side, you'll see the template if you were doing an all-in-cloud deployment into a new VPC. So here's your new VPC that will be created. Here you can see the Spectrum Protect Plus server. Here you can see the vSnap server. Versus if you were doing an all-in-cloud deployment into an existing VPC where we would just add in the Spectrum Protect Plus server and the vSnap server and optionally the S3 buckets in both cases. Here's what those templates look like for a hybrid deployment. Once again with an existing or new VPC. On the left hand side you would already have your Spectrum Protect Plus server installed. You would do that on your own. And then the deployment would create the vSnap if it was into an existing VPC here on the left-hand side versus if it was being deployed into a new VPC on the right-hand side. So these templates are kind of nice because you can see the different subnets and how everything works together there. The Bastion host plays an important role in the Spectrum Protect Plus deployment and running. Basically, your AWS Bastion host is going to enable you to securely connect to your Linux instances in your virtual private cloud. And so it does not expose your environment to the internet and it allows you to access the other instances in that VPC through your SSH connections on Linux. Now, this is configured with security groups to provide a fine grained ingress control. The Bastion host, remember, is going to be created as part of a new VPC. If you are utilizing an existing VPC, then you have to specify the Bastion server in that configuration. So one must already exist. For technical requirements, your AWS account has to have the following resources. And if it doesn't, then you can request the service level increase out there. These resources include the virtual private clouds. So you have to have one of those, whether you're using the all on cloud or the hybrid solution. Elastic IP address is also one for each of those solutions. 
For security groups, you're going to need two for the all on cloud solution versus one for the hybrid solution. IAM roles, you need up to three. Instances, you need up to three for the all on cloud and up to two for hybrid. HDD EBS volumes, up to 16. SSD EBS volumes, you need nine for the all on cloud and five for the hybrid. And then the NAT gateways, subnets, S3 buckets, internet gateways, and auto scaling groups are the same for both of them. You will also need a key pair and you can either use an existing key pair or you can create one specific for the Spectrum Protect Plus. The IAM permissions to deploy AWS CloudFormation templates are administrator access, and that's managed within IAM itself. You may choose to use custom policies with more restrictions if you decide so. You also have to have a VPN tunnel to establish bi-directional communications between the existing VPC and the Spectrum Protect Plus server if you're doing a hybrid solution. When we set up an EC2, the server instances configured for a vSNAP component, according to the Spectrum Protect blueprints, we require that each vSNAP server EC2 instance have 50 gigabytes of Amazon Elastic Block Storage, an EBS SSD volume, a dynamic number of EBS SC1 volumes, and log and cache disks as defined by the blueprint that correspond with that vSNAP size. For each Spectrum Protect Plus server EC2 instance, you can see here what those requirements are. And we've based this off of a R5A.2x large recommendation inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus blueprints. Like I said earlier, before you run this deployment, you will want to utilize the blueprints and the sizer. It will also help you understand your Spectrum Protect Plus server environment. So you definitely want to run that ahead of time, and those outputs will translate directly to the instant type that you need to choose. And that instant type will be based upon not only the vSNAP repository size, but also dedupe, if you've enabled that for the vSNAP or not. As you go through the deployment in AWS, you can monitor it with CloudWatch. And CloudWatch is basically a monitoring service for AWS cloud resources and applications that are run in AWS. And part of this Spectrum Protect Plus offering is to enable you to go into CloudWatch and figure out what's going on. So here's just some examples of using the CloudFormation stack or using an instant ID to monitor those groups. Okay, so what are the actual deployment steps when you're ready to go into AWS and kick this off. First of all, I recommend checking out the deployment guide. Step one, you're gonna sign into your AWS account. Step two, you're gonna to subscribe to the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus AMI. Step three, you're actually gonna launch the CloudFormation template. And it's gonna be in this template where you do things like choose if you're doing an existing VPC or a new VPC where you choose which version, which I would assume would be the latest version of Spectrum Protect Plus software you wanna use, where you choose if you're doing a hybrid or an all-in-cloud installation, and where you provide other things like your, your key pairs and so forth. It's also in the details section that you'll see the new option to enable or disable EC2 snapshots. So the final step is to go in and finalize your Spectrum Protect Plus server and vSNAP are connected and working, make sure the SLA is out there. However, if you did a new VPC and you did the hybrid selection where your Spectrum Protect Plus server is gonna be on-premise, you will have to manually define the vSNAP to the Spectrum Protect Plus server, which is not a big deal, but that does have to be done. Likewise, if you wanted to enable EC2 snapshots, you would have to do that manually inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. And the reason for that is AWS could not do that because your vSnap and your VPN were not yet set up. So we're currently deploying Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.16. As new releases come out, you can go into the management console of Spectrum Protect Plus and update the new releases. That's not a problem, but it will be the customer who does those updates. When going through the AWS Marketplace, 
deployment of Spectrum Protect Plus in either a hybrid or all in cloud solution. In the cloud formation storage detail step, you will see a new option to enable EC2 snapshots on Spectrum Protect Plus. By default, this is enabled. If you leave this, it will create a new IAM user with the roles that are restricted to just EC2 snapshot functions. And then it'll take that IAM user and register an account into Spectrum Protect Plus server using that new IAM user access key and account. It'll create an SLA policy inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. And then you, as the Spectrum Protect Plus administrator, can go in and assign EC2 servers to be protected via that SLA. Now the EC2 snapshots will be stored in the AWS S3 storage. They are not sent to the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap. One thing to note is that if you do not choose this option, if you set it to disable, you can always, after the fact, enable EC2 snapshots in Spectrum Protect Plus, but this would be manual. You could also manually enable them if you upgrade your Spectrum Protect Plus server from version 10.1.5 to 10.1.6, or when you did the installed via AWS, if it was a hybrid solution where the VPC did not yet exist, you would have to go through and manually set this up. So the steps that happen, and I'll give you both the um, automated steps or the manual steps. The first thing we need to do is register a new IAM user inside of AWS. And this will happen automatically via the marketplace setup, but you can do it manually otherwise. Then you'll go through and inside of Spectrum Protect Plus, you'll set up a SLA policy. You'll register this new IAM user. You'll then have Spectrum Protect Plus run an inventory to see which of the EC2 regions and instances are out there. And then you'll associate the EC2 instances you want to back up with the SLA policy. And that will cause the EC2 to be backed up and protected on a scheduled basis. And this schedule and the retention of those snapshots are gonna be managed by Spectrum Protect Plus. Now the snapshots will remain on AWS in the S3 storage. They're not gonna be copied to the Spectrum Protect vSnap. If you wanna restore one of those snapshots, that can be done through the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface also. For the AWS EC2 registration, we first create an IAM inside of AWS, and that will be given the specific permissions required to manage that snapshot. And you can read about that in the Spectrum Protect Plus Knowledge Center if you want more details on that. You'll then take that IAM's access key and ID and register those inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. You will also need to create an SLA inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. If AWS is doing this for you, it will have the SLA policy called AWS underscore policy underscore snapshot and then a number. And the SPP account will be AWS underscore cloud with an AWS key of AWS underscore key. Of course, you can do this manually as well by simply going into policy overview, add SLA policy, and selecting a Amazon EC2 policy. One thing you can add in after the fact inside of an automated AWS if you want is the snapshot prefix. And this would just be a prefix put on the snapshots created by Spectrum Protect Plus for your EC2 images that are stored out on AWS. Spectrum Protect Plus will run an inventory against AWS to find out the different regions, the different instances, and so forth. And you will choose from these instances which of those you want to associate with an SLA. And so you'll need to do this whether you set this up via the AWS Marketplace install or if you manually did that. And so here you can see we've assigned these to a SLA policies. Um, and this can be instances or tags that can be assigned to an SLA policy. 
The snapshots will run according to the SLA's schedule, but you can also do on-demand snapshots if you want. In order to do a restore, you can choose one of the snapshots that exists out in the AWS environment, and then you can choose to restore that and choose where you want to restore to. If you do restore to an alternate um, availability zone, then you do need to specify the subnet for that instant being restored. Now, all EC2 restores run in a clone mode, so it's basically creating a copy of the instance from the EBS snapshot that's out on AWS. Instant access restore is possible for individual disks if that's supported on those disks. And if you drill down past the instant level to select those individual disks for restore, that will then kick off a restore job of just those individual disks. Another new option in Spectrum Protect 10.1.6 is the ability to protect NTFS or REFS file systems. And if you want more information on how this file system backup occurs, uh, check out this YouTube video. One thing to note is that this file system backup will be sent to the vSnap that's sitting out on AWS. On YouTube, we've got a couple of videos of actually deploying the Spectrum Protect Plus solutions inside of AWS, so check those out. Also, you can check out the deployment guide. I've put that link here. Okay, thank you very much.